Hi there and welcome. I got this thing here uh, by mail today and uh, it's something that... Uh... Hi there and welcome. I got this thing today from uh, a guy in Germany and um, it's something that I might start collecting uh, simply because I find it fascinating. And as you can see it says here C1-112 and uh, that will tell you the part number of the Soviet oscilloscope that is in here and uh, I was told this one is fully working so we'll have a look at that and uh, there are some stuff pages from a German newspaper that I will enjoy later I think it's always good to know what's happening around the world and uh, the guy was so kind as to uh, put an article about the machine in Russian and uh, yeah unfortunately I don't know Russian but it could be interesting anyway there's not a lot of foam here, but not a lot of bubble wrap here, but very well, very well packaged. And there it is. A really nice, tiny, portable oscilloscope. Okay, so here we have a close-up. And uh, it's very similar to a modern day oscilloscope, uh, as you can see. Here we have the horizontal adjustment, down here we have the vertical adjustment. Uh, we have over here the trigger menu, we can select the falling rising edge, internal, external and FS, which I'm not sure what is. Um, and then there's the level for the trigger. Down here we have the input of course, and uh, here we have uh, AC or DC coupling. So that is uh, it's really, really uh, awesome. All the basic uh, knobs and controls for an oscilloscope. And uh, yeah, we have a nice line here that we can move up and down. Uh, this potentiometer I find is a, the other way around. When I turn it left it goes uh, up. But anyway, that's fine. Um, so it's fully working and there's a very clean, nice uh, trace here. And I have a signal generator that I have uh, set up for 15 kilohertz. So uh, let's plug that in. And uh, yeah, straight away we have a gorgeous little sine wave there. And uh, this is the level control that moves up and down when, when uh, selecting the level. But that's okay, you can get used to that. Uh, then we have... Yeah, that's strange. They all go the other way than a normal scope. Uh, these buttons here, or this as well, uh, goes the other way. But I, I guess you can get used to that. So uh, let's see how high it can go. This is 40 kilohertz, and that's the widest. Ah, there we go. Let's move it up. We are now at uh, 300 kilohertz there. And we are at 1 megahertz. And we can go higher. Let's try that. And you can see down around here, now we are at uh, 10 megahertz. And then now we can see the amplitude starts dropping. So, um, and triggering starts to become a problem as well. So, uh, this is 18 kilo, uh, 18 megahertz. So, my guess is this is a f somewhere around 5 megahertz bandwidth, 10 megahertz if we are. If we give it a little bit of slack, um, but pretty cool for normal operation, uh, for field work. I think this is a pretty awesome, nice little 10 megahertz oscilloscope. Uh, but the main feature for this one here is that uh, apart from being portable, of course, it also has a built-in 
volt meter and uh, ohm meter. So it's basically a complete station for, uh, I think it's for for portable work, but also in schools maybe, where students could have voltmeter and ohmmeter together with the oscilloscope. And what is so amazing on this machine is that uh, they haven't bothered with some LED display or something like that. So just take a look when I press here. Look at that! On the screen, voltmeter! It's really, really, uh, I love it. I, it's really beautiful. And uh, we will take it apart in a few seconds and we'll take a look at uh, how they do that. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't come with any probes here. But uh, yeah, I think with a pair of crocodile clips or something, we can probably get it running. There are two inputs for voltage range. One is uh, up to 2.5 volts, which I think is an annoying range, uh, since we normally operate from uh, 0 to 20 volts or something like that. It would have been better if they had one range from 0 to 25 volts and then one for up. But uh, anyway, 2.4, 2.44, perfect. 5.37, 5.36. It's really, really good. And uh, I guess that flickering stuff there was an overload of some sort. But 18.3, uh, 18.3 is spot on. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And uh, of course, uh, it should be able to show ohm as well. So uh, let me just um, try that out. Let's see, I have a resistor here. Just pick a random one. This is uh, 33K. Let's see what it says here. This is uh, the display in kilo ohm. I guess. Oh, look. Ah, 33 kilo ohm. There we go. And. Uh, 32.8, this is giving us a little bit more accuracy, and I guess this is overloaded now. So uh, yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. And uh, let's just try the fluke on the same resistor. 32.9 kilo ohm on the fluke. And uh, this one says 32.9. So it's bang on. It's bang on. It's very, very... Very, very nice little machine. Uh, I think I'm gonna use that uh, in my uh, in my work. Uh, I know I've said that before, but uh, I really like this one. Really gorgeous, and it's not taking up too much space. It's only about, uh, let's see, it's only about uh, 25 centimeters uh, deep. So it fits easily on my, uh, on my workbench. So now that we've seen how it works, uh, let's just uh, take it apart and uh, look at the inside because that must be really interesting uh, how they do this uh, text on the screen here. And yeah, these are using the normal screws. And now those with wax, I think you can see them up here. There are two screws here covered with wax. So now there's no wax in this hole and the warranty is definitely void. But uh, with the age of the machine I think that's not, that's not a problem anyway. Oh, and the screws are coming out. Four very long ones. And the two very small ones that I probably shouldn't have removed. But uh, let's remove the cover. I unfortunately don't think there's much to see here because uh, it's very compact. And uh, I don't want to take it out and uh, touch some high voltage stuff. Uh, mainly because I'm a chicken. So here we have the inside and there's not much to see really. We have a big CRT here which is uh, of course uh, for the screen. On the, on the right here we have a standard rotary switch um, which is uh, selecting different resistors here and uh, on the end there is a potentiometer so you can adjust uh, uh, the deflection as well as uh, uh, fine tune with this thing here. On the left there's a PCB for triggering and uh, there's not many transistors on this board and uh, I'm not sure you can see it down there down there Maybe, maybe not. There's a couple of uh, 
I see it. So uh, this is a lot uh, newer than the previous oscilloscope I had. And uh, of course that makes sense as well. Um, the power supply is a big transformer here. So uh, none of that switch mode rubbish. Then we have a round piece of uh, wire it looks like. I think it's a piece of... It's hard, I think it's a piece of ferrite, it's some kind of a delay line, it's, it's uh, looping around here, um, which is also quite interesting. And uh, then we have, uh, on these PCBs, there are two PCBs here in a sandwich, and that is actually what I wanted to take a look at, because that must be the voltmeter and uh, the circuit that generates the digits uh, on screen. Okay, so here is what actually we came for. Uh, this is some uh, board here uh, used to generate the display. And uh, they are, I guess, the equivalent of uh, 7.4 series ICs, but uh, Russian. And they all start with the K155 followed by uh, some number. Um, maybe later on, when the voltage on the CRT has subsided, I might take it out to get an idea, but since I don't know the ICs, um, yeah, it's maybe not too interesting. A very nice, very, very nice oscilloscope, voltmeter, ohm meter combo, and uh, very well designed. Everything in a very small package, and uh, I mean, the material is not really the latest, newest, fantastic, it's just. Uh, materials but it, it works and uh, it's very rugged very well made really and yeah before I say goodbye I think I should have just looked at the this uh, document here uh, I just uh, browsed through it and uh, it actually has the schematic for everything and um, it is of course in Russian but uh, I think by studying it a bit uh, we should be able to understand what goes on and uh, yeah, you can see here uh, the X and Y uh, sweeps for drawing the letters. Um, like the letter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 until 9. And uh, there are some more examples down here about how to control the beam to draw letters. And uh, more here. And uh, lots and lots of info. So that is really, really cool. Um, unfortunately these days uh, nobody has used for drawing stuff on an oscilloscope screen uh, since they are all digital nowadays and uh, LCD but anyway the technology is quite interesting so yeah that is finally it uh, thank you for watching and uh, see you again real soon